Okay, fifth graders. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of homework help here. Um, let's uh, let's look at number nine here together. Um, so what have we got here? We've got nine tenths, and we're adding two one hundredths to it. Well, what would be the common denominator? Well, hopefully you all realize it would be one hundred. That would be easiest. So this is going to be the same. 100 goes into 100 once, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now, 10 goes into 100 10 times. 10 times 9 is 90. This is an addition problem, so we're going to add uh, the 2 and the 90, so it's 92 over 100. Are we done yet? Well, no, because we can reduce this. And both of these numbers can be divided by 2. Well, what's 100 divided by 2? What's half of 100? That's 50. Well, what's half of 90? Some of you might remember from mental math, that's 45. And so once more would be 46. So that's 46 over 50. Are we done yet? No. That can still be divided by what? 2. Okay. How many times does 2 go into 50? Well, what's half of 50? It's 25. Okay, what's half of 46? 23. 23 over 25. Can those be reduced? Nope. So there's your answer for number 9. Um, let's do another one. Let's see here. I was looking at these down below. We did one similar to these today in class. Let's look at uh, number 21 right here. So remember what I said that uh, whenever you have parentheses, and we do in the, the four problems here at the bottom of the page, you do what's in the parentheses first. Okay? So we have one half and we're adding two sevenths. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up here one half, and we're adding to that two sevenths. So what's the common denominator? Well, it's neither one of these. We need to find a number that they will both go into evenly. Well, what's 7 times 2? That's 14, so we could just use that. Okay? 7 goes into 14 twice, and 2 times 2 is 4. 2 goes into 14 7 times. 7 times 1 is 7. It's an addition problem, so we add the numerators. 7 plus 4 is 11 over 14. Can that be reduced? No. Anytime you have a prime number, 11's prime, it can only be divided by 1 and itself, then you'll, you'll be done. You can't reduce it any further. So, um, what problem was this? This was... Two, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot what I was doing here. So, that was just the first part. Of this problem we're doing number 21 here okay so um, what's in the parentheses is 11 over 14 now what are we doing so we're subtracting from 13 over 14 we're subtracting what's in the parentheses well what's in the parentheses 11 over 14 we have the same denominator. How convenient is that? So what's 13 subtracting 11? That's 2 over 14. Are we done? No, that can be reduced. You, 2 will go into both of those evenly. 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 14 7 times. So the answer to number 21 is 1 seventh. Let's turn to page here. Take a look at the top of 23, problem number 23 here. It says the table shows the amount of ingredients needed to make a pizza. Okay, so here's the ingredients, cheese, pepperoni, and mushrooms. How much more cheese do you need than pepperoni and mushrooms combined? Show how you solve the problem. How much more cheese do you need than pepperoni and mushrooms combined? So we have to combine pepperoni 
and mushroom. It's kind of like putting them in a in parentheses. So I could do um, uh, one third plus one quarter. So one third, and we're adding one quarter. So you guys should be able to do these by now. What's the common denominator? We didn't. Know, we need a number that they can both go into evenly. Well, twelve works. Four goes into twelve three times. Three times one is three. Three goes into twelve four times. Four times one is four. We're adding these, so three plus four is seven. Seven twelfths. All right. <coughs> So we're not done yet because it says, how much more cheese do you need than pepperoni mushrooms combined? So this is the pepperoni and mushrooms combined. It's seven twelfths. So we need to see um, how much more cheese, cups of cheese there is, because it's all in cups. That's what the C stands for. So we need to take three quarters, and I'll just write it right here, three quarters, and we're subtracting seven twelfths. Okay, so this is the cheese, and this is the pepperoni and mushrooms combined, and we're subtracting one from the other. So what's the common denominator here? Is there a number that both 4 and 12 will go into evenly? Yeah, how about 12? So this stays the same. 12 goes into 12 once. 1 times 7 is 7, so you just move it over. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. Now what do we do? We just simply, it's subtraction. So we're subtracting the 7 from the 9, and we end up with 2 twelfths. Are we done? No, that can be reduced. How many times does 2 go into itself? Once. How many times does 2 um, fit into 12 evenly? Six times. So the answer to number 23 is 1 sixth, and put a C there for cup, 1 sixth of a cup, okay? So that's how much more cheese you need to make this particular kind of pizza. All right. Uh, 24 and 25. Let's look. Charlie's goal is to use less than 50 gallons of water per day. His water bill for the month showed that he used this many gallons of water in 30 days. Did Charlie meet his goal this month? Explain how you decided. Okay. So less than 50 gallons per day did he meet his goal so what do we have to do here so in a, in 30 days he used 1524 okay and so we need to divide that by 30 to see how much he used each day and i'm just going to start this and I'll let you guys do the rest. Does 30 go into 1? Nope. Does 30 go into 15? Nope. Does 30 go into 152? It sure does. How many times does 30 go into 152? Well, I'll just count by 30s. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. I don't want to go more than 152. So how many times was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So five times, I'm going to put it up above the two here, and I'm going to put 150, and then I need to subtract, all right? And so that leaves two. What do I do? I need to bring down the four, 24, okay? Um, so I could add a zero here. Um, bring down a... Uh, bring down a zero, okay, and the decimal um, would go right there. But anyways, so how many times, let's see, how can I explain this? How many times is three, let's just look at the three and the 24. How many times does three go into 24? That's eight times, okay? So he's, it looks like he's used 58 gallons per day. I said I was going to do just part of it and set it up, but I did the whole thing for you there. So how nice is that? So did he meet his goal this month? Well, he wanted to use less than 50. He used 58. So the answer is no. And then explain how you decided. And you can just explain briefly that you divided this number by 30. All right. 
Uh, number 25. Jereen spent a quarter hour on homework before school, another half an hour after she got home, and a final one-third of an hour after dinner. Did she spend more or less than an hour on homework and all? Explain. Well, what do you have to do? You have to add up one quarter plus one half plus one third. Add those up. You need to find a common denominator. <clears throat> this is kind of interesting. Well, and you'll have more of these as time goes on. We're not just adding two fractions, we're adding three fractions. So you need to find a common denominator that three will go into, that two will go into, and four will go into. Okay? What number could that be? Well, does six work? No, four does going to six equally. How about 12? Yeah, 12 will work. All of these will go into 12. And you just set it up like you have been doing the rest of these. Three goes into 12 how many times? Four times. Four times one is four. Two goes into 12 six times. Six times one is six. Four goes into 12 three times. Three times one is three. It's an addition problem. We already have the denominator, it's 12, so we now we just add up the numerators. 6 and 4 is 10, plus 2 more is 13. All right. Remember, any time the numerator, that's what's on top, is larger than what's on the bottom, it's going to be uh, greater than 1. How do I know that? Because how many times does 12 fit into 13? Or if we took away 12 of 13, what's left over? All right. We can take away 1 12. <clears throat> okay, 12 fits into 13 once. What's left over? 1 12. So 1 and 1 12th of an hour is how much Jereen spent doing his or her homework. All right. Um. I'll let you guys do 26 on your own, 27, higher order thinking. Find two fractions with a sum of two-thirds, but with neither denominator equal to three. I'll make this worth 50 points. There's more than one right answer for this. So just like I did in that last one, that higher order thinking, okay, that's worth 50 points. See what you guys can come up with. Finally, at the bottom of the page, 28 and 29, what fraction's missing from that equation? Looks like they're giving you some choices here. And this 29 is what the value of the expression. We're just going to add up all of these. I, I'll say something here, <coughs> excuse me, that'll make it a little bit easier. Look at the first two that we're adding together here. One quarter. Okay, we're adding one quarter to that. What's that equal? Well, you just, the, the denominator stays the same. What's one plus one? Two. What's another way of saying two over four? You guys should recognize that's one half. So really, you could look at this problem here. If you could just do that in your head, this is really the same, same thing as, and I'll just write it right over here a little bit small. It's one half, because that's what these two are equal to, plus three eighths. Okay? So if you do that, and then you can see which one of these equal to that. Okay, that was your homework help. Don't forget you have the Get More Math to do. Quite a few of you finished the 12 points that were due today. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow.